Hey, welcome back everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Solo Wargaming Show Weekly Wargaming News. It's been a while since I did one of these. I think the last one I did was like a Gen Con special. But I think I did it in July, so we didn't do one in August. So this is going to be a long one. Uh, I'm trying to get this up on the weekend so you can watch it on Saturday. Sit it back with a cup of coffee, maybe prep some miniatures or go over some uh, rules or some notes for a gaming session tonight. So right off the bat, we are looking at a new range that was announced at Gen Con called Marvel Crisis Protocol. And I think this is by a company called Atomic Games or Mass, Atomic Mass Games. But it is being in done, done in conjunction with Fantasy Flight Games. So I'm not exactly sure what that relationship is. But uh, they are producing this game together. This is going to be, from what I understand, an unpainted line of Marvel miniatures around 40 millimeter scale. Uh, with game rules and the best thing about this and Don't know if I have it in here now, but I will try to get some in before I put this up is they are going to be doing terrain so any of the terrain you see in uh, The pictures they're doing is eventually going to be uh, Used and available for the game things such as dumpsters garbage trucks cafes diners so and what i was really thinking is even if you do not wind up purchasing the crisis protocol figures and rules if you play hero skit hero clicks this is going to be a godsend because now you can buy things like dumpsters and garbage trucks and uh, other buildings cafes coney island shops and populate your uh your gaming table they may be a little bit large because if this is 40 millimeter you know, Hero Clicks is closer to 28 or 30, but they should work. They should work. Next up is uh, Mantic Games is doing the third edition of Kings of War. So we've got some images of their new Northern Alliance faction, which is my favorite faction. They're, I think they're redoing a lot of the factions, but I like the Northern Alliance. We also have an image of a Goblin Slasher, which is a very large miniature on some type of dinosaur. And then this miniature of a chimera, which I am not too impressed with. It looks like a three-headed polar bear chimera with bat wings. So, I don't know. Maybe you'll see the actual model. This looks like a, a render or some kind of a illustration of a render. Next up, uh, my favorite western line is from Knuckle Duster Miniatures. And this is their Gunfighters Ball Range. This is a billiard table. So again, they have a lot of items you can use to populate saloons or other diorama scenes in, uh, in Western, 28 millimeter Western play. And I still would like to get a good Western game up. I, I, have a, I have a decent set of figures and I have a skeleton of a town. So eventually, once I get that completed, I will probably do a play session for you guys. Next up is Lucid Eye. And I think Lucid Eye is the ones that are doing this called the the Red, the Book of the Red Elf King or something like that. But they also have some uh, other independent lines, which I'd like to keep an eye on. This one is called Amazon War Daughters. Uh, these are called the uh, uh, Sea Peoples, which I really like. Uh, so that's kind of an ancient line. Moving on to Modifius. Uh, Modifius has got the license to the Elder Scrolls video game, so they are going to be doing a line of figures, and I'm assuming rules, game rules, uh, to play Elder Scrolls. Now, they did show this, uh, this miniature here that they had it. They supposedly had it at Gen Con, but I couldn't find it. I mean, I went to their booth, but they didn't have any there, so I'm not sure how you would have gotten it at the time. I think you can still order it on their website. It was like $24. So it's a little steep. Uh, but they do have others that they are starting to show images from the Elder Scrolls game. I know nothing about Elder Scrolls. I, I'm familiar with the imagery. So uh, it's obviously some type of fantasy. But something to keep your eye on. I mean, the miniatures actually look good. I'm not exactly sure who who is doing their miniatures, whether it's them or whether they're licensed through another manufacturer. But I will get you guys more information, especially the game and how it plays once I see that. 
uh, one of my favorite miniature uh, creators is Fireforge Games and so they have uh, as part of their range of the Crusades they have done some Grand Masters which are very nice uh, now I think the first one we're looking at is just a Templar Lord and then this here is Orphan the Druid this is Alard the Young Wolf and some of these may be for their fantasy line because they're kind of doing a fantasy and a uh, crusader line around the same time this is Alard mounted this is a fireforge Albion so I have two more images one is a, I think is going to be the Templar Grandmaster and a Teutonic Order Grandmaster so I will make sure that those get put in here as well Moving on, V and V are showing off some miniatures for their new uh, Viking range. This is called the Shield Wall. So obviously, you can put these figures together on a different base and create a Shield Wall. They are also showing off this uh, these miniatures called the Ufenards, which I'm assuming would be their Berserkers. Which thank thankfully they're not naked like some manufacturers. Another one of the up-and-coming miniature creators is Eladan. Now, I'm not sure. I know they're a foreign, uh, foreign miniature company. I'm not sure. I think they may be in Spain. But most of their miniatures that I know of are sculpted by a guy named Boris Rolozin. So he's an excellent sculptor. And they are, they now have a range of his available fantasy miniatures. So most of what you are seeing by Eladan here is, uh, is now available. And these, obviously, if you're in the U.S., there's going to be a little bit of shipping on them. But I think the miniatures themselves are about $10 each. Next up is, I, this is a figure for Affinity War Games uh, by uh, Corvus Belly. This is a variant of their uh, Wild Bill. Now, I'm not sure how he's available. I know they had a set available at Gen Con, and I think he came with that. So I don't know if you can get him otherwise. I just like the figure. I don't. I don't play uh, Infinity or Aristea, which is where Wild Bill was initially released. But you might be able to get it. I will let you guys know if I can get it. Another uh, line of miniatures that is uh, kind of making some news is it called Mini Crate. And from what I understand, I'm not sure, but I think they have some relation to Private Air Press. But Mini Crate is like a subscription service where you will get one miniature every month. Now, they have a license with Robert E. Howard, so they are doing a Hyborian series, or basically a Robert E. Howard series, because they have Solomon Kane, who's not in Hyboria, as well as Belit and some uh, other characters. But the kind of the, uh, the, big, the big promo for the series is this King Conan sitting on throne figure, which I think we've all wanted ever since we saw the movie Conan the Barbarian. But there's a catch. So you cannot order this miniature individually. It does not come in the mini crate by itself. You have to order a six month subscription, which is $100. And then you will get this miniature free as soon as you order. And then you will get the other six miniatures, one per month. Uh, so basically, you've got to pay 100 bucks, And then you will get this miniature in addition to the others. Uh, I don't know so at seven miniatures you're looking at maybe thirteen dollars a miniature which is you know reasonable for you know for exclusive miniatures but the thing is you got to pay the hundred dollars up front so you just have something to think about I really like the miniature I'm sure if somebody gets it and tries to sell it secondary market they're gonna ask a hundred dollars for it anyway so so you know you got to get it while you can if you really want it uh, this is another independent range by Bad Squiddo, and these are some more Amazons. So you can see we've got two different takes on Amazon there. I like the Amazon Queen in the center. The other two, I don't know what they're doing. We've got some terrain pieces by Bad Squiddo, grave markers with skeletons hugging them. So it's kind of a Halloween thing, which is why I thought I'd throw that in there. As well as some bad squiddo. These look like ruins effects. 
dinosaur heads, items like that. Next up is a miniature by, I think this is Gripping Beast. This is Arthur. And they have a range, Gripping Beast does. I think they have like Attila the Hun and some other leaders. This is just the one I like the most, but I just kind of give this, show you this to let you know to check out their site if you're interested in like some world leaders. I think they even had a Charlemagne. So if you're interested in that. The next line is, uh, this was a Kickstarter by a company called Forged in Battle uh, in production, in connection with West Wind Production. So I'm not exactly sure what West Wind's connection is because I went to their site and I couldn't see where they mentioned this. But this, uh, now Forged in Battle has an ancient line in 15 millimeter. This is like a medieval dark ages line in 15 millimeter. And so you see here, they're going to be doing a lot of the leaders from that period. Harold, King Crumb, Arthur, Attila, Basil, Charlemagne, all of these. Uh, the Kickstarter has ended, but you can, I think you could probably lay pledge. And if not, you can wait because they do put these up on their website. So the Kickstarter basically gives you a discount on if you were to purchase them later individually when i looked at it i mean basically for the kickstarter you would get 192 figures for about 80 us dollars or 72 pounds and i think you would get like 90 figures for 48 pounds or 50 55 us dollars but it's not much of a discount so if you just want to wait you can buy them at their website individually and maybe pick the ones you want. But they, they're going to be producing them Viking Longships, a Warlord Stronghold, Dark Age Warlord Stronghold. And all of this is 15 millimeters. So if you play board games or other kind of map based tabletop games, definitely something to check out. And then they've got some examples of some painted ones, which looks like they paint up pretty nice if your eyes can hold up to that. Next up is uh, Rubicon Models and this Carl Garot 040-041. This is a uh, this is a basically it's a cannon on a rail or a rail gun. So I've always wanted this model. I've actually been aware of it and I've looked at it normally in 172nd. I know there's a 172nd version of this. I do not know how big this would be in 148. It would be big. But in 172nd, it kind of makes a nice little table piece. But the price in 172nd is ridiculous. You would, you would not be, you'd be surprised. So I am looking forward to seeing uh, what Rubicon is going to price this at. Uh, but this may not be out to maybe the the first quarter of 2020. Sticking with World War II, Bolt Action has launched a new Korea uh, line. And basically it's the same World War II figures, but they've done a Korean supplement and they're creating some basically North Korean forces. Uh, and so in, a di in a support of that, they're going to be releasing an M46 Patton Heavy tank. Which is nice. I don't think this was used very much. Probably made it to Korea and that was about it. Uh, they also have a new Blitzkrieg German support group. A Polish army support group. And a MASH unit. <laughs> and this is MASH MASH unit. Not a real MASH unit. This is from the TV show. Uh... With all of the iconic characters, so if if that if you like that, if that puts a smile on your face, you could pick that up. Reaper Miniatures is in full uh, release of their most of their Bones Four miniatures and their new Bones Black line. So I've got some images here. We're going to go through them pretty quickly, uh, just to give you an idea, you know, of what is now available in Bones black all of these from what i understand were part of bones Four. so if you did that kickstarter none of these are new but if you missed it like me or declined to do it like me then you can now pick up some of these in bones black i will be doing some unboxing of some bones black 
uh, during my 48 day celebration of 800 subscribers. So we'll get a better look at these at that time. Uh, Warlord Games also has a new halfling army, which you are seeing images here for their Warlords of Aeron range. And I do not play Warlords of Aeron. It basically is just a the boat action game engine uh, pasted on top of a fantasy uh, background, which I don't like. I, I just don't think the mechanics work that well for fantasy. It's kind of silly to have a fantasy unit getting pinned or suppressed or whatever they want to call it. And I just don't like it for fantasy. But I do like this miniature range of a halfling army. So uh, I probably won't pick up the whole army, but hopefully... You know, I can pick and choose some items and uh, use them in some of my other games or some of my preferred uh, fantasy games. And so that's what you're seeing here. It's just images from their new Halfling Army, which I think is available. Uh, a lot of the things in here, when I put them in here, were only pre-order. But since it took me a while to get this together, they are available. One of which is Modiphius's uh, new Star Trek line now this is like a 32 millimeter range of figures of both star trek series which i think if you're gonna do star trek that's how you have to do it you got to get the license to both so they have a landing party which we're looking at here also known as red shirts <laughs> so if you ever wanted to play one of the famous red shirts that get turns into a pile of dust during a landing party then now you can do that but more importantly, or at least I should say even better, is the new Iconic Villain set. And so you can spot some of your favorite villains in here. If you look closely, I think there's Q. There's a, a Borg. I think that's the Borg Queen. There's the Lizard Guy on the planet that Kirk fought. There is... Uh, I think that may even be Locutus, which is actually Picard. And there is Khan. Yes, Khan. So I may buy this box set for that. These boxes run about $40. So they're not cheap. You're getting, what, three, six, eight miniatures. So, I mean, it's $5 a miniature. But, I mean, you got to spend the whole 40 at once. So, I mean, if there's some of these you really wouldn't want, you know, you know you're just going to wind up averaging that out over the other ones. But those are available now from Modifius. Getting back to uh, miniature releases, uh, WizKids, a line that I'm doing some unboxing now on the channel, so check them out because there's one going up every day uh, for the foreseeable future, has released their Wave 10 figures, one of which is this beautiful, magnificent Kraken. Now, I will say I have seen this miniature in my uh, game store. It's only $30, which I think is, you know, I think is acceptable. You get the boat, you get the Kraken bursting out of the water, and the tendrils. Uh, I actually like the miniature. If you look at it in person, I, I do like it. I, I have not gotten it yet simply because I'm hard-pressed to really think if I would use this that much. Although I do have some scenarios involving a Kraken. The problem is I already have a Kraken from my Conan set. Which is kind of more traditional. This Kraken looks a little bit kind of like a frog or something. So I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence with this. This is something I will probably pick up if it even goes on sale a little bit. But in addition to that there is a whole new range of Whiz kids wave 10 figures being released so we are going to take a look at those real quickly and i will be quiet okay one of the things I do want to point out is this new uh, terrain that WizKids is doing. And right here you are looking at what is called the gas station and that is exactly what it is. This is literally a gas station with pumps, barrels, and tires. Uh, 
I think there is one channel, the Gallon Goblin, that has shown shown this at least. I don't know if they did the unboxing, but they have. They got one in from WizKids, which is the only location I've seen yet that actually has a physical one. I think this would be great if you are doing some modern war gaming. If you are doing some zombie games, you could kind of uh, put some rust effects on this. So I'm interested in that. But this is not the only terrain they are doing. They're doing a lot of other terrain pieces, including, I think, a goblin camp. Uh, I think they are doing a town. Well, I think they had the town out. But they're, they're really getting into... Uh, they're really getting into like scene sets. The problem is they're kind of expensive. Expensive. I mean, they're averaging sixty-five to eighty dollars for most of these scene pieces. So it's probably something most people won't pick up now. But on the secondary market, if it goes on sale, these are the kind of things in the future that you know just people will be grabbing up. But WizKids has not left any license unturned. Right, I think their mission this year is to leave no license unturned. So they are also going to be doing a trans, uh, Transformers line. And this is like the cartoon version of the Transformers, which I think was the best. So you have Bumblebee, Megatron, and Optimus Prime that are going to be available. Again, these will be unpainted as far as I know. Again, in their effort to leave no license un, 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 unmolested, they have picked up a WWE license, right, to do WWE figures. Now, I first came across this in the Game Trade magazine, and they were unpainted. But what we are looking at here are painted versions, so I'm assuming there may be two. The painted versions look like they're going to be $6.99, and I'm assuming the unpainted will be the normal $4.99. But guys you got to get these painted i mean for two bucks extra you get on you can get andre the giant the big show uh eddie guerrero uh john cena uh who is this let's see let's see who this is come on guys you can help me out with this kane macho man rick flair ronda rousey stone cold steve austin the Rock. Now, I do not like this Rock pose with him holding up the mic like that. That's. I don't. I hope they do an alternate version of him in an action scene because that's that's a wasted figure. Triple H. I don't like that pose either with him spitting. I'd like to see him coming off a ring. Somebody named Trish. I don't know. I guess they had to put some women in here. The Undertaker. Yes. Uh, there will be a starter set. You can see who's going to be in there with two females, which I have no idea why they would put two females in the starter set. That's just, again, I guess they figured they had to find a way to make you buy them. But you can skip over the starter set. Other than I think that's going to be the only way to get the ring. Uh, moving on to another line that WizKids will be doing is Marvel. <laughs> I told you guys, they are going after every license out there. There's ever been anything that had a license, WizKids will probably have it before the year is out. So they are this now. This line from Marvel, from what I understand, is in conjunction with the new X Men. I think it's the X Men animated series, uh, Hero Clicks line. So you can actually paint these Marvel WizKids figures, take them off of these bases, and put them on those bases, or vice versa. Because apparently these bases are also going to have stats. So, basically, it gives you alternate poses for some of your Marvel Hero Clicks figures, which I am very glad that WizKids is getting into the Hero Clicks line. So, and, you know, I think right now they're starting out not necessarily with, you know, with the well known figures. There's a few in here, like Warbird, that I'm not familiar with. Uh,. So I think they had like Cannonball or Psylocke. So, but I think more of them will be coming. I think these were just selected because this is what is in that current, uh, what is in that current uh, Hero Clicks uh, set. Moving on to uh, board games and board games. There's a game out now. I think on Drive Through RPG by Patrick Todorov called Hardwire Cyberpunk Espionage and Mayhem. So this might be a cool game if you're thinking of picking up the gas station 
or some of the other modern scene pieces, you might want to start looking for some rules. A uh, Kickstarter called Trude Vang recently ended. Now, I had initially backed Trude Vang. It is an Eric Lang uh, game. Has some excellent looking miniatures. But there is there's no dice throwing in the combat. And from what I saw, you draw little chits out of a bag. And you're trying to draw the right one. And that just looked totally boring to me. So I dropped my pledge. One of the other board games that is everyone is really anticipating is A Song of Ice and Fire and the new Baratheon frac Factions, which uh, should be coming out probably by October. So you want to keep your eye out for that. This is going to be a real big starter, uh, the Baratheon starter. Another uh, board game that went to Kickstarter that I had really been anticipating, even though I never thought it would come true, was the Company of Heroes board game. Now, I used to play Company of Heroes on the computer just hours on end, just hours on end. Matter of fact, we used to put together leagues and teams, and we would, we would play in leagues and teams and score them, and we just had a lot of nights of fun. And this, this game, the, the video game has went through a lot of iterations, uh, to where it's, it's still available on Steam now, but it's not really the same game anymore And it's kind of lost its uh, luster with me So when I saw that they were doing a board game based on the original version of it. I was very excited This is another Kickstarter. I initially signed up for But I later dropped because what I found out was apparently the combat in this game again There will be no dice rolling you will simply Compare the stats of your vehicle to the vehicle or item you are attacking and then apply damage and stuff. So that seems kind of boring. Okay, so I mean because there's no there, there's really no element of chance or surprise. I mean basically if you have a I, I assume if you have a tiger and you fire at an armored car. Okay, the result is armored car is destroyed. You know pick up your armored car and move it. So Eh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's more realistic than rolling dice and saying the shot missed or bounced, but I don't know. It just seems kind of boring. So, but anyway, I will keep my eye on this because if it comes out and, you know, the gameplay gets good reviews, then, you know, we will revisit this and uh, see if it's something worth picking up. And I mean, if not, you might just grab it for some cool looking uh, World War II miniature vehicles and stuff. You could obviously swap these out in some board games like Tide of Iron. Which I have Tide of Iron and I've started painting up my figure. So keep an eye on the channel. I'm probably going to be doing a video showcasing that. So that is all we have for you guys. I don't know how long this went. I tried to move quickly. There's a few things I will go in and kind of fill in after I get through recording. I hope you guys are having a good weekend, a good month, a good year. Take care and God bless.